Good morning and welcome. I'm Reverend Devine, this is Reverend Liz. We are the co-ministers here at Unity of Fort Collins and it is our pleasure to be here this morning for service. And it's also uh, a blessing that you're here, whether you're choosing to listen live or as of next week, um, go to more of a coming in presence mode. Uh, either way, we are so excited that you're here. We are a welcoming community. And what that means is wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. Whatever your traditional values are, faith beliefs are, discoveries are, it is all welcome to this sacred space of unity of Fort Collins. And so we are blessed to know that you are contributing to the magnificence of this community and how we all connect to one another. I wanna take a moment just to read our vision statement. Our vision statement is that we're centered in love, inspired by spirit. We awaken, connect, and thrive. Now our mission statement, which is equally important, so you know what you're connected and, and committed to. Our mission statement at Unity of Fort Collins, we are creating a, a loving community by holding a safe and sacred space where all are supported to learn, grow, and participate in an awakening world. And so doesn't that feel awesome to know that that's what you're participating in here? So I am blessed that you're here. We're both blessed that you're here. And now it's time for Reverend Liz to give you some fabulous announcements to keep you up to date. Fabulous. Thank you, Reverend yeah. D. So happy that you're joining us today on this Memorial Day weekend. And perhaps you're out playing. Um, but the great thing about our technology is that you can always watch this at a later time. So wherever you are on this Memorial Day, may you be safe. So we have some things that are happening here. You may or may not know that next, what is it, Sunday? Next Sunday is June 6th. We are having a reopening in-person services here at Unity of Fort Collins. Now things are not going to be the way they've been in the past. They're gonna feel and look a little bit different and we wanna bring ourselves back as safely as possible for all people. Uh, we are going to maintain some rules in order to protect the most vulnerable people in our unity community. So there will be some protocol in place. There are reservations that'll be necessary for our few first weeks and that will be through a Google form link. You can find that on the Unity of Fort Collins website. You can also contact Julie in the office. Just give a call Monday through Thursday between 9 a.m. and 12 noon, and she can do that for you and with you. Uh, there still will be mask wearing inside the building and social distancing. Everything else is will take place outside and you can read all the details of our reopening. We also will still be recording the service so that those of you who will not be able to join us in person at 10 a.m. on Sunday, June 6th, can still watch via our Facebook Live uh, 10 a.m., our page there and our YouTube page. The one thing I did wanna mention is that childcare will not be available on June 6th and maybe not be for the rest of the month as we are working ourselves back in. So that's the big happening, but there's another happening at the end of next week, and that is Saturday. And that is June 12th from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. We are having the Unity Annual Yard Sale. So you got stuff? <laughs> Who doesn't have stuff? Who would like to have a little bit less stuff? Well, this is your opportunity to release some of your stuff for a good cause, and this is the place you can bring things. Beginning on Monday, June 7th, you can bring your yard sale stuff to Unity. We will accept donations during our drop-off hours, Monday through Thursday, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, and the day of the sale as well, which is June 12th. And, and please bring your larger items if need be on June 12th. If you need to have some other arrangements, again, call the office and we can arrange for some pickup or to assist you with bringing things at a later time. So when, 
free up your stuff. Just please bring your things that are clean and in good repair. And the only things that are no-nos are no TVs, no computers, no large appliances or vehicles, please. Um, we're not geared to set those up. And please, not so many clothes. They don't tend to go very easily and they usually have to be hauled off. So there are volunteer sign up emails because we could use some assistance in putting things out and, um, and getting things set up. So you can call the office or Leanne Gable as well to get that set up. Everything else is happening as it normally does via Zoom, our community connection today actually will be the last one we do online because we will be in person and doing our community connection in the parking lot at Unity of Fort Collins. So the 11 a.m. Zoom on Sundays today will be the last time for that. We will continue doing meditation on Wednesday nights at 6 p.m. Uh, via the Facebook. And we have something new happening on Tuesdays, and that is Tuesdays, the Heart Talks will be taking place at Fossil Park in Fort Collins outside. So the details, again, go to the Unity of Fort Collins website that shows and tells you where to find the folks that are meeting with their lawn chairs outside in the park. And in case of rain, there still is a Zoom link. So any questions, call the office. And last but not least, if you've been listening to our services, you know we have an inspirational reading every service. Where are they coming from? They're coming from the Unity Daily Word. We have some of these at Unity and we would love for you to have a copy. Basically, there is a reading for every single day of the month for May and June. And for a little cost, you can have something to add to your spiritual practice. So please pick one up when you're here and continue to do your spiritual practice because we know it makes a difference. Absolutely. So that's it for the exciting announcements. And I'm going to pass this now to Reverend Divine as she opens our service in prayer. And if you'll go within with me, let us just take a moment to anchor our time together in prayer. Just knowing that this time together is special, it's sacred, that between the music that you hear, the message from Reverend Liz, and community connection time, that whatever you are seeking or you have no idea is seeking you is revealed to you in some way that supports and serves your well beingness. I know that this time together is filling each and every one of us up. It's opening us to be receptive to our good, enlightening and inspiring us to remember our own magnificence and who we came here to be. And that we allow that vibrational energy to move through us so that we make a conscious contribution out in the world. Who we are is love. Who we came here to be is love. And each and every one of us shares that vibrational connection with each other. So the more that we share that part of our soul and our beingness, the more that ripples out to make a quantifiable connection and contribution to the well-beingness to all. So I just give thanks for our time together, knowing it is blessed, it is rich. Anything we need to let go of, to be fully present in this time and space, to be listening with an open mind, an open heart, and that wisdom within is all provided in this time together. So if you'll just anchor this with me by saying, and so it is. Thank you. It's now time for our unity blessing. The words will be up on the screen and I invite you to say it out loud. Something magical happens when we speak our word out loud. Our unity centers us in light and peace, allowing us to recognize our God within 
and to radiate that love to the world. It's now my extreme joy to introduce today's guest musician, one of my all-time favorites. The amazing Karen Drucker is back with us. And if you heard me say her bio, well, you get to hear it again today. She has been a singing mermaid, a singing casket, and was literally elevator music when she was hired to sing and play piano in a moving elevator. You know, Karen is very versatile. She was the music director in three different New Thought churches and was honored with an honorary doctorate of music for her work within the Centers for Spiritual Living Community. And she also received a Grace Note Award for her work within the Unity Movement. Karen has recorded 20 CDs of her original inspirational music and her book, Let Go Over the Shore, has been a bestseller. I love that book, it has music in it as well. Karen speaks and sings and leads workshops at women's retreats and body mind health conferences in various churches around the country. Karen's intention is to make a difference by using her music to open hearts and share a music of hope, acceptance and love. And one thing I love about Karen's music is that I have all of it and I listen to her music. And so I'm going to invite you specifically to listen to her lyrics because the songs were specifically picked for today's service and they contain much of the message besides my talk. So let us open our hearts to the messages, the music and the beauty as Karen Drucker. Thanks, Karen. Good morning, Unity. Fort Collins, Karen Drucker coming to you this morning. Sing with me. That's all you gotta sing, you just say. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Got it? Sing now. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day, this healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing, this healing day. Sing it, here we go. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for oh, I hear you. This day. I hear you. Thank you for this day, Spirit. Thank you for this day, this healing, this healing, this healing day. This healing, this healing. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my friends. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful friends. My wonderful, my wonderful, my wonderful. Do that again. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Think about them in your mind's eye. Sing. Thank you for my friends, Spirit. Thank you for my wonderful. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my health. Thank you for my health, Spirit. Thank you for my radiant, my radiant, my radiant, my radiant health. My radiant, my radiant. How about my life? Thank you for my life, Spirit. Thank you for my life. Thank you for my life. your word opulent my opulent my opulent my opulent well my opulent my opulent my opulent thank you for this day thank you for this day spirit thank you for this day thank you for this day spirit thank you for this healing this healing this healing this healing day this healing this healing this healing day thank you for this day I want to thank you, want to thank you, thank you for this day, Spirit. Every day I say thank you for this day. Hi, I'm Leanne Gable. I'm a member here at Unity. 
This morning I'm doing the reading. It's called Respect. It's from the Daily Word for May 31st. Respect. I honor and respect the divinity within myself and others. As I was growing up, I was taught to respect those who were older because they likely had acquired great experience, knowledge, and wisdom. Yet it was not the years of life that commanded respect, but the life lived in those years. There are many who demonstrated tremendous courage as they took on great challenges. Their willingness, daring, and determination deserve respect. They went where others would not go and did what others would not do. I have reverence for those who came before me. I respect and honor the divinity within those who through their unique and selfless contributions have made a better world. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. Me, you, we can make that difference. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the ones who will make the difference. We are the ones who will change the world. We are the ones, we are, we are, yeah. We are the ones, we are. I've been feeling like I can't make a difference Been feeling like there ain't no use Feeling tired and a little unconscious Coming up with every kind of excuse Till I realize it's not all up to me but When we join together we shape our destiny To see a world where we are living as one It can be, it shall We are the ones that we've been waiting for. We are the ones that will make a difference. We are the ones who will change the world. We are the ones, we are, we are, yes. We are the ones, we are, we are. No one else is gonna make the changes. No savior gonna drop from the sky. Nothing left to do but wake up. Cause it's really up to you and I to take it one step at a time. Stand together with your hand in mine. Then we will see that world that we've been dreaming about. We need it now. The time is now. There is no doubt. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. 
will make a difference. We are the ones that we've been waiting for. Thank you, Karen Drucker. I so love that song and it fits so well with the theme of today's talk entitled To Be Remembered. So we are the ones we've been waiting for. As you all know, tomorrow is Memorial Day. So today I'm gonna to be speaking about Memorial Day, how it began and to honor and remember those who gave their lives in service and also how it may inspire us. I'd like to begin with the story of Alex. One day, and actually it was on Memorial Day, little Alex, seven years old, was in the church foyer, staring up at a large plaque on the church wall. The plaque was covered with names and little flags of the American flag, and he was staring at it. And the minister noticed, and he finally went over to Alex and said, Good morning, Alex. Good morning, Reverend, replied little Alex, still focusing on the plaque. Alex said, what is this? Well, son, it's a memorial to all the men and women who died in the service. Soberly, they stood looking at the plaque, observing it for some time. Finally, little Alex said, which service? the nine o'clock or the 11 o'clock. <laughs> you know, you can't resist and it's only Memorial Day, one day of the year. So here you go, the Memorial Year Day, funny. So Memorial Day is traditionally known as a day for picnics, three day weekends. It is the official start of summer, however, Memorial Day can mean so much more. And it is a day of remembrance for those who gave their lives and died in the nation's service. Memorial Day isn't just a day of service, it can also be a day of deep reflection and prayer. So do you know how Memorial Day began? There happens to be a lot of different stories about Memorial Day, about where it began and when it began. And there are different places like Columbus, Mississippi, Columbus, Georgia, Waterloo, New York. And who's to say exactly which one was the beginning of Memorial Day? And do you know what it was called originally? That's right, I heard somebody through the computer say, it's Decoration Day. Well, it began as Decoration Day, but I found something because I did a little more research this year than I've done in the past. And I'm gonna share with you what David Blight, who is a American history professor at Yale University, wrote and discovered about the first Decoration Day. Uh, David Blight is the author of many books on US history, including Frederick Douglass, who was the prophet of freedom. And he's also an advisor for the ZIN, Z-I-N-N, -N, Education Project Teach Reconstruction Campaign. Now that's a mouthful, but that's where I found this particular article. So I'm going to read to you how he has, what he discovered. He writes that Americans understand that Memorial Day, first known as Decoration Day, had something to do with honoring the nation's dead. But when did it begin? Who began it and why? He discovered that at the end of the Civil War, there was dead people everywhere. Some of them were in half buried coffins and some were only visible by unidentified bones strewn all over the killing fields of Virginia and Georgia. Americans, both North and South faced an enormous spiritual and logistical challenge of memorialization. The dead were abs visibly absent. And this was shocking to me, this piece of, uh, facts is that approximately 620,000 soldiers died in the war. American deaths in all the other wars combined through the Korean War conflict totaled 606,000. I had no idea that there was that many more that had perished in the Civil War. If the same number of Americans per capita had died in Vietnam as died in the Civil War, 
it would be 4 million names on the Vietnam Memorial. So after a long siege, a prolonged bombardment for months all around the harbor and numerous fires, the beautiful port city of Charleston, South, South Carolina, where the war had begun in April 1861, lay in ruin in the spring of 1865. The city was largely abandoned by most of the white residents by late February. And among the first troops to enter and to march up Meeting Street were the 21st U.S. Colored Infantry. Thousands of Black Charlestonians, most of them former slaves, remained in the city and conducted a series of commemorations to declare their sense of meaning of the war. The largest of these events, and unknown until some extraordinary stroke of luck in David Blight's research, took place on May 1st, 1865. It was during the final year of the war and the Confederates had converted a, the planter's horse track named the Washington Race Course and Jockey Club into an outdoor prison. Union soldiers were kept in horrible conditions in the interior of the track and at least 257 of them died of exposure and disease and that were hastily buried in a mass grave behind the grandstands. Some 28 black workmen went to the site, reburied the Union dead properly and built a high fence around the cemetery. They whitewashed the fence and built an archway over it calling it the Martyrs of the Race Course. Then black Charlestonians in co cooperation with white missionaries and teachers staged an unforgettable parade of over 10,000 people on the slaveholders race course. The symbolic power of the low country planter aristocrats horse track where they had displayed their wealth, leisure and influence was not lost on the freedmen. It was at 9 a.m. on May 1st that the procession started with 3,000 black school children carrying armloads of roses and singing John Brown's body. The children were followed by several hundred black women with baskets of flowers, wreaths, and crosses. And then came the black men marching in cadence followed by contingents of Union infantry and others. They gathered in the cemetery enclosure and the children's choir sang, we rally around the flag and star spangled banner and several spirituals before the black ministers read from scripture. Following the solemn dedication, the crowd dispersed into the infield and do what most of us do on Memorial Day. They enjoyed picnics, listened to some speeches and watched the soldiers drill. The war was over. Decoration Day had been founded by African Americans in a ritual of remembrance and concentration. Officially, as a national holiday, Memorial Day emerged in 1868 when General John A. Logan, Commander of Chief of the Grand Army of the Republic, called on former Northern soldiers in their communities to conduct ceremonies and decorate graves of their dead comrades. On May 30th, 1868, when flowers were plentiful, funeral cer ceremonies were attended by thousands of people in 27 states and the following year in 31 states. Over time, several American towns, both North, North and South, claim to be the birthplace of Memorial Day. But all of them commemorate cemetery decoration events from 1866. The pride of place as the first large scale Ritual of Decoration Day therefore goes to African Americans in Charleston. The old racetrack is still there. The old race site dedicated to the martyrs of the race course is gone. Those Union dead were reburied in a national cemetery in Beaufort, South Carolina. Some stories endure, some disappear, and some are rediscovered. So there you have it your history lesson for today. I hope you enjoyed that. I liked it because it wasn't just facts. It gave a little bit more of a story of how it began. So there has been in May 11th, 1950, the Congress actually proclaimed 
um, the people of the United States to observe each Memorial Day as a day of prayer for permanent peace. So this prayer of peace, actually, they, they have put it out that 11 a.m. in whatever locality you are, this would be a time for all Americans to unite in prayer and for the prayer for peace. And I have a prayer that I would like to share with you that you might wanna look up and see yourself. In fact, I'm gonna invite you to close your eyes and take a breath and place your hands upon your heart. This is a prayer written by Frederick Ruzat entitled Prayer for All those that are trying to keep the peace. We remember in our prayers this special day, all those military personnel who died during wartime, putting their lives on the line for their loved ones and the cause of freedom. We are thankful to them for trying to keep the peace according to their inner lights. We also cannot forget the many combatants who died in the line of friendly fire and the ordeal their families went through to find out the truth. We are thankful to them for trying to keep the peace according to their inner lights. We are grateful for the bravery and conviction of nonviolent men and women who refused to go to war and suffered the consequences of their stand. We are thankful to them for trying to keep the peace according to their inner lights. We respect all those resilient souls who have spent their lives protesting against war and paid the price with their own loss of freedom. We are thankful to them for trying to keep the peace according to their inner lights. We mourn the deaths of innocent civilians caught in the crossfire of war we remember as well the animals, plants, and waters destroyed by the weapons of war. All they wanted, all we wanted, was for the combat to cease so they could live with dignity. We are thankful to them for trying to keep the peace according to their inner lights. On this Memorial Day of Remembrance and Reconciliation, we are confident that God has taken all these men, women, and beings into her warm embrace. We hold them all in our hearts and are thankful to them for trying to keep the peace according to their inner lights. So be it. I love that prayer. And I hope you enjoyed it as well. It is a prayer for peace. You know, these folks that gave and lost their lives in war times for freedom, we salute, we honor, and we give our never ending appreciation to them. You know, those that have served and lost their lives in war, we may not know their names, but we remember them. And we not just remember them, but we thank them because they left a legacy, a legacy that what they did and what they stood for did make an imprint upon all beings up until this day. So I want to speak to you about the inspiration called legacy. Now, the definition of a legacy is a gift of property or especially personal property as money that is left in a will or a bequest. It's also definition is anything handed down from the past as from an ancestor or predecessor. It's also known as something that is the result of events in the past. Legacy is also a memory that you leave in the minds of those who knew or knew of you. So the question I have for you today is what will be your legacy. What do you want to be remembered for? What mark would you like to make upon the world? What have you come here to be 
or to do. The idea of legacy may remind us of death, but actually it's not about death. Being reminded of death actually is something that is good because death informs life. It gives us a perspective on what's important and helps us decide the kind of life that we'd like to live and the kind of world we wanna live in. What does it mean to leave a legacy? It means putting a stamp on the future and making a contribution to future generations. People wanna make leave a legacy because they wanna feel that their life mattered and we made a difference. So there are benefits also of leaving a legacy and it's not about being self-important, it's about how we affect each other because whether we know it or not, we affect one another. We cannot not because we are connected. Having a legacy will help you to know once you know what your legacy to be, you can actually start building it. It's going to help you make decisions in your life when you know what you'd like to be remembered for. An interesting exercise is to write your obituary and what would you like people to remember about you? You know, to remember that you were kind, that you were loving, that you were generous, that you had a passion for a particular um, something in the world that was your thing. You know, it could just be you were a good friend, that you looked for the positive in people, that you were a student of life and you shared things. It allows you to do things in your life that really matter. And it also helps us when you have a legacy to make better use of your resources and the time that you have. It will help give you meaning and purpose if you know what your legacy is, is, what your purpose was to be here. What difference did you make? Many of you may know of the movie called Dead Poet Society. It's an American film that was set in, the, in 1959 where a boarding school is located in Vermont. And it stars Robin Williams who plays uh, John Keating, an English teacher who inspired his students through his poetry. In one scene, Keating is seen spoke, speaking to his students about the meaning of life. And he quotes Walt Whitman's um, poem, O Me, O Life. The quote is, O life, of the questions of these recurring, of the endless trains of the faithless, of cities filled with foolish, what good amid these, O oh life, O oh my life? Answer, that you are here, that life exists and identity, that the powerful play goes on and you may contribute a verse. The poem explains that life is like a play and anyone who's ever lived gets to contribute a verse to the play of life. Keating then asks his students, what will your verse be? The verse that you contribute to the play of life, that's your legacy. Gandhi once said, your life is your message. That's big. Your life is your message. What is the message that your life is portraying? It's through the tapestry of our lives that's woven together in the way that we live every day that we all leave a legacy. Each of us has a story to share and how we live out our story becomes our legacy. Question again, how would you like to be remembered? I'm gonna invite you on Memorial Day to think on that and this week and write it down. How would you like to be remembered? What would you like to be remembered for? It's neither morbid or dark to think about what you'd like people to say about you after you're gone. I love this quote. In fact, it's an important practice to tuck your mortality into your front pocket where it stays close to your heart instead of in the back pocket of denial, where you live life asleep to the fact that you will one day die. Acknowledging and making peace with what is inevitable 
will allow you to fully live life awake and experience the abundance of life in every moment. So some questions I'm going to give you to consider, and you can write these down. What do you want your life to stand for? How would you like to be remembered by your family and friends? And perhaps those that are beyond your circle of family and friends. How will the world be a better place because you were in it? Whose lives do you wanna to touch and in what way? What lessons and gifts would you like to pass on to future generations? You know, leaving a legacy, you don't have to be somebody who's known like Walt Disney or George Washington. It's the everyday people who are our heroes. I'm gonna close with this story about Miss, a teacher named Mrs. Thompson and her student, Teddy Stollard. As she stood in front of her fifth grade class on the very first day of school, Mrs. Thompson told the class an untruth. Like most teachers, she looked at her students and said that she loved them all the same. However, that was impossible because there in the front row lay slumped in his seat, a little boy named Teddy Stollard. Mrs. Thompson had watched Teddy the year before and noticed that he didn't play well with the other children. His clothes were always messy and he constantly seemed to need a bath. In fact, Teddy could be rather unpleasant. It got to the point where Mrs. Thompson would actually take delight in marking his papers with a broad red pen, bold X's, and putting an F at the top of his papers. At the school where Mrs. Thompson taught, she was required to review each of her students' past records, and she put Teddy's off to the very last. However, when she reviewed his file, she was in for a surprise. Teddy's first grade teacher wrote, Teddy is a bright child with a ready laugh. He does his work neatly and has good manners and he's a total joy to be around. Teddy's second grade teacher wrote, Teddy is an excellent student, well liked by his classmates, but he's troubled because his mom has a terminal illness and life at home must be a struggle. His third grade teacher wrote, his mother's death has been hard on him. He tries to do his best, but his father doesn't show much interest and his home life will soon affect him if he, some steps aren't taken. Teddy's fourth grade teacher wrote, Teddy is withdrawn and doesn't show much interest at school. He doesn't have many friends and he often sleeps in class. By now, Mrs. Thompson realized the problem and she was ashamed of herself. She felt even worse when her students brought her Christmas presents wrapped in beautiful ribbons and wrapping paper, all except Teddy's. His present was clumsily wrapped in heavy brown paper that he got from a grocery bag. Mrs. Thompson made big pain, took big good care to open it carefully in the middle of all the rest of the presents. And some of the children started to laugh when she opened it and found a rhinestone bracelet with some of the stones missing and a bottle of perfume that was only one quarter full. But she stifled the children's laughter as she put on the bracelet and said how pretty it was. And she put some of the perfume on her wrist. Teddy Stollard stayed after school that day just long enough to say, Mrs. Thompson, Today, you smell just like my mom used to. After the children left, Mrs. Thompson cried for about an hour. On that very day, she quit teaching, reading, writing, and arithmetic. Instead, she began teaching children. Mrs. Thompson paid particular attention to Teddy, and as she worked with him, his mind seemed to come alive. The more she encouraged him, the faster he responded. And by the end of the year, Teddy was one of the smartest children in the class. And despite her lie that she was going to love all children the same, Teddy became one of her teacher's pets.
A year later, she found a note after under her door from Teddy telling her that she was still the best teacher he had in his life. Six years went by before she got another note from Teddy. He then wrote that he had finished high school third in his class, and she was still the best teacher he had in life. Four years after that, she received a letter from Teddy saying that while things had been tough at times, he stayed in school, stuck with it, and would soon graduate from college with the highest of honors. He assured Mrs. Thompson that she was still the very best teacher he had ever had in his entire life. Four years later, another letter came. This time, he explained that after he got his bachelor's degree, he decided to stay on and go a little further. The letter explained that she was still the best and favorite teacher he'd ever had. But now his name was a little longer. The letter was signed Theodore F. Stollard, MD. The story doesn't end there. You see, there was another letter later that spring. Teddy said he had met the girl that he was going to get married to. He explained that his father had died a couple years before, and he wondered if Mrs. Thompson might agree to sit at the wedding in the place that was usually reserved for the mother of the groom. Of course, Mrs. Thompson did, and you know what? She wore that breast bracelet, the one with several rhinestones missing, and she made sure to wear the perfume that Teddy had given her during their last Christmas together. They hugged each other and Dr. Stollard whispered in Mrs. Thompson's ear, thank you, Mrs. Thompson, for believing in me. Thank you so much for making me feel important and showing me that I could make a difference. Mrs. Thompson, with tears in her eyes, whispered back, Teddy, you have it all wrong. You were the one who taught me that I could make a difference. I didn't know how to teach until I met you. You know, we can never tell the type of impact we have on someone's life by our actions and by our lack of action. We need to consider that our work is all in what we do every day, how we act and interact with each other. Maya Angelou, who is one of my most inspirational beings, she passed actually in 2014 on May 28th at the age of 86. She had so many hardships, but she left such a legacy that after she was gone, her words of poetry and inspiration stayed with us. We all have a legacy. Are you willing to look at what your legacy is, what you came here to do, and how you want to be remembered? Maya Angelou says, I've learned that people will not forget. Oh, no, people will forget what you said but people will not forget how you made them feel. And she also says, try to be a rainbow in someone else's cloud. Maya Angelou has left her body and is now a free spirit. Her words, her wisdom and her passion and her story and her legacy lives on. We continue to be blessed by the divine one known as Maya Angelou. We are all Maya Angelos and Mrs. Thompson's and Teddy's. We all have a story and a legacy. What's yours going to be? How do you want to be remembered? Her final, Maya's final quote in her last tweet was on May 23rd, 2014. She wrote, listen to yourself and in that quietude, you might hear the voice of God. The one that is breathing me, the one that is breathing you, brought us here, brought itself here as you and me, each a unique individualized expression of divine love. We are here for a purpose, a reason. Dive into that reason. Listen to that heart that is beating. Listen to the voice of the divine that brought you here. You have a legacy. And I'm grateful for your impact upon my life because you do. Thank you. Namaste.
And now if you'll join me in our prosperity blessing. I personally like to hold or visualize in my hand whatever my offering is to the well-being of this community. Whether it is your sacred save of time and treasures that you offer up or your monitor, monetary green love, holding that vision in my hand adds to the vibration of love that I'm contributing. And when I hold it to my heart, for me, it reminds me of the love that all of us add when we do this together. So if that feels comfortable to you, feel free. And if it doesn't, whatever you're good with, I wanna thank you all for all that you contribute, whether it's um, online and PayPal, whether you mail in or walk in your, your contribution, it keeps our community thriving so that we're not only doing good work immediately in this community, but out into the greater community because we do contribute monthly to projects that are going on in the community of Fort Collins. So without all of us doing that together, we couldn't, we couldn't do that. So the words will be up on the screen. Again, if you'll say it out loud with me. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I give and all that I receive. Thank you, God. And thank all of you. When we walk like we are rushing, we print anxiety and sorrow on the earth. We have to walk in a way that we print only peace and serenity on this earth. Be aware of the contact between your feet and the earth. Walk as if you were kissing the earth with your feet. In beauty, may I walk all day long. May I walk. Through the seasons, may I walk, may I walk, may I walk in peace, may I walk, may I walk in peace. On this path, may I walk through my life, may I walk.
kissing the earth you walk with your feet to the heart. In peace, may we walk, may we walk, may I walk, may in you walk, peace. may we walk, may I walk. Please join us in the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. I am that light. The love of God enfolds us. I am that love. The power of God protects us. I am that power. The presence of God watches over us. I am that presence. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So thank you, Reverend Liz and Unity of Fort Collins for having me this morning. Hope you've enjoyed it. So if you're interested in anything that I'm doing, any new music I'm putting out, you can just go to karendrecker.com. Sign up on my newsletter. I send out a free song every month. So it's always nice to sing with you. Maybe I'll be there in person at some point. So sing this with me. Our closing song goes like this. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. And I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. You got it? Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy stand for joy we are making a new world now all right here we go let there be peace sing it out i am a stand for peace let there be love i am a stand for love let there be joy i am a stand for joy we are making a new world now sing it again let there be peace yes I am a stand for peace, so let there be love. And I am a stand for love, let there be joy. I am a stand for joy, we are making a new world. Now let's bring it into a prayer. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace, let there be love. I am a stand for love, let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. One more time. Let there be peace. I am a stand for peace. Let there be love. Feel that. I am a stand for love. Let there be joy. I am a stand for joy. We are making a new world now. Just that last line. We are making a new world world now we are making a new world right here at unity fort collins right now and so it is Thank you, Karen Drucker. Your music today was right on. I'm so grateful for the music that you create for all beings and that I had the joy of being able to select the music and taking a stand and to walk in beauty. And we are the ones that we've been waiting for. We have so much to be grateful for. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for our spiritual community, Unity of Fort Collins. I'm grateful for the love and the inspiration that we give to each other. We are each other's legacy. We all make a difference. Thank you for making a difference in my life. And may you have the best day and week ever. And stay safe, reflect on the peace and reflect on your life meaning and your legacy. Happy Memorial Day. Until next time, be well and bye for now. <laughs>